Over the last nine years, I estimate my total donation numbers to be over 350,000 ounces. I would not wish this condition on my worst enemy. It is, it is not fun. This is what I would pump in a day. This is a lot of milk. It's like the best feeling ever and it lasts for only minutes before my body starts making milk again. Nobody wants to live like this. No, like nobody wants to live like this at all. How many individual babies have benefited from my milk? That is, first of all, impossible to know. Um, the milk bank I donated to, they specifically take donated breast milk and create a breast milk product that is for preemies and micro preemies. So babies that have just reached that um, viability and something has happened where they were born far too early. They are not developed enough at all to be able to tolerate a man-made substance formula. It's too hard on their digestive system. They don't thrive, they don't survive. So this breast milk product is essentially a prescription. It is literally saving their lives. My body creates a lot of the hormone called prolactin and that is what drives milk production. Uh, so in the morning, all of my pump sessions um, are my largest and usually when I start pumping, you might be able to see that the milk looks a little blue and this is what's called four milk. Um, it's the milk that comes out first. It's usually higher in sugar. And then later during a pumping session, more of the hind milk will come out and that's the fattier, it's kind of fattier uh, portion of the milk. And I use a pitcher to mix all of the milk together so that it all has the same nutrients, the same makeup. Hyperlactation syndrome is technically a disability and I feel like we had to adapt just as anyone else would with any disability. First of all, everything was new to me. Uh, so everything was a learning curve. Everything was a struggle. Everything was painful. I think that it has not only affected me, but it has affected my family as well, especially in the beginning when we couldn't go anywhere, we couldn't do anything. I always had to stick to this pump schedule and I always had to be home to do it. Um, but over the years, and of course with the new technology that I am involved in, I've been able to regain a lot of that freedom and I really try not to be held back. This is the little workhorse that allows me to live my life with this condition of hyperlactation. This little guy has given me my freedom back, um, the ability to do anything while pumping, be as mobile as I want while pumping instead of being glued to an outlet or a chair. Every weekday morning I drive my girls to school and it is maybe about a 30 minute round trip drive. So it's perfect for a pumping session. The standards that are put in place to be able to donate to our most vulnerable humans um, are very high. The standards are incredibly high and for very good reason. So every day I have to get all of my milk together that I have pumped and I need to mix it all um, because it separates the fat rises to the top and the heavier water or the four milk part of the breast milk settles to the bottom. Um, so I mix it and then I start to like package the milk or portion it out before I make what I call a milk brick, which is 14 bags of milk inside a gallon Ziploc bag. It's six ounces per bag, so it's an 84 ounce brick. I never let any breast milk go to waste. It's all used or donated. So this milk right here is very special. 
After giving birth for a very short amount of time, your body creates what's called colostrum. So this very, I would call like limited edition colostrum is what I can send to recipients with brand spanking new babies. This would be a normal amount for a mom to pump or express after giving birth. My body after giving birth produced this amount. I work with a lot of recipients that their child has been given that label, failure to thrive. Being able to turn that around and that label removed in so many different stories has just been everything to me and why I can continue doing what I do. Elizabeth has been um, a huge blessing to our family. It was during COVID and my milk had not come in yet uh, in the hospital and they were gonna send us home with formula and we really wanted to breastfeed him. Um, she dropped everything and um, came to our house and sat for a couple of hours with us, um, taught me how to pump properly. Um, unfortunately, my milk never fully came in, so um, we just continued with the donor milk from her. I can't, you know, imagine raising our boys without her help of donor milk. I definitely uh, respect and acknowledge the sacrifice that Elizabeth and her family makes on a daily basis, and we sincerely appreciate all that she does, mm -hmm. and um, we're really honored to know her. Will I ever stop? Yes. I don't think that this is sustainable. I think that the physical toll, the mental toll, um, over time it continues to stack up and nobody wants to live like this. No, like nobody wants to live like this at all. There are medications available to combat the prolactin hormone. These medications do come with some pretty serious side effects. Another option that I have is potentially looking into a double mastectomy to remove all of the glandular tissue that is producing breast milk. I think right now my current goals are to make sure that my son has enough breast milk um, and then from there I think the most promising option for me would be to get a double mastectomy. My wife Elizabeth, um, what she does with her donations and her and milk production is something that's very, it's very important towards, you know, reaching a certain goal and helping children. Uh, she puts a lot of effort and love into it. So it's, it's something that I completely and fully support of her record only takes into account what I've donated to a milk bank and not all of the other donations that have taken place locally or worldwide to recipients. I am really hopeful that breaking this record and kind of sharing my story will normalize milk sharing.